If you're shopping for a mid-size luxury crossover, there's an alphabet soup of obvious choices from BMW, Audi, and Lexus. But if you don't want an X3, a Q5, or an NX, you might be interested in the all-new Volvo XC60. That's because the Swedish automaker is leaning into its outsider status by giving car buyers something unexpected when the competition is obvious and predictable. Hi, I'm Keith Barry. Yes, the XC60 stands out because it's different. You'll immediately notice the Scandinavian design and its spec sheet reveals a focus on active safety. There's even an optional plug-in hybrid drivetrain. But does different mean better? Well, to find out, I took this well-equipped plug-in hybrid XC60 on a 400-mile road trip. The XC60 might be new for 2018, but it's been in the works since 2010. That's when the Chinese automaker Geely purchased Volvo and decided to invest $11 billion in what it called a scalable product architecture. That's the platform all new Volvos are based on, so they share parts, designs, and engines. The three-row XC90 crossover was the first fruit of that labor. That was followed by the S90 sedan, the V90 wagon, and the upcoming XC40 compact crossover. And now, after almost 10 years of churning out XC60s without any changes, Volvo has finally redesigned its top-selling five-passenger crossover for the new platform. The new car is basically a smaller version of the XC90, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nicole Wakelin loved the bigger Volvo when she reviewed it for Car Gurus, and it sold well, too. The new XC60 has 63.3 cubic feet of cargo space with the rear seats folded. Although that's about four cubic feet less space than the 2017 model had, both headroom and legroom are improved from last year's XC60. Every 2018 XC60 comes with all-wheel drive, an eight-speed automatic transmission, and a two-liter, four-cylinder turbocharged engine. If you choose the XC60 T5, that engine's good for 250 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Upgrade to the T6 and an added supercharger will work in tandem with the turbo to steadily deliver up to 316 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque without a hint of turbo lag. The T8, which I'm driving, is a whole other animal. It's a plug-in hybrid that adds an 87 horsepower electric motor to drive the rear wheels. It's capable of a total of 400 horsepower and a whopping 472 pound-feet of torque. Combined fuel economy is supposed to be around 26 miles a gallon, and if you charge it, you can get up to 17 miles of electric-only driving. In base momentum trim, the XC60 starts at $41,500. That means it costs more than a base Acura RDX, Audi Q5, or BMW X3. But at least it comes well-equipped. It's got a panoramic sunroof, plenty of active safety features, 18-inch wheels, and a 10-way powered driver's seat, all standard. Move up to the R design and you'll get 19 inch wheels, some more aggressive design elements, and more tech. Finally, the top of the line inscription adds unique touches like driftwood inlays and stitched leather trim. Depending upon whether you add options like Napa leather seats, an air suspension, or even a refrigerated glove box, the price can skyrocket. In fact, the sticker on this well-equipped inscription that I'm driving is over $71,000. That's more than $30,000 more than the base price of the car. But no matter what options you choose, you'll find clean lines and unpolished wood that evoke Scandinavian interior designs. The shifter is even made by the famous Swedish glassmaker Oraforsch. It's one of the best car interiors I've ever seen, and the materials all feel as good as they look. And if you're willing to spend $3,200, you can even get one of the best sound systems I've ever heard in a car. It's a 15-speaker setup from Bowers & Wilkins, and it even comes with a setting that mirrors the acoustics of the concert hall in Gothenburg, Sweden, where this car is made. The centerpiece of the dashboard is the 9-inch Census touchscreen. It's chock full of apps, although they're pretty redundant because the XC60 comes with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay standard. 
The Sense's touchscreen works kind of like a smartphone in that you can swipe from left to right in order to change between menus, but that's really hard to do while you're driving, and it explains why I accidentally opened the wrong menu and even called my boss a couple of times by accident. The touchscreen is also where you can customize everything from how long the lights stay on to how heavy the steering feels. There are literally hundreds of thousands of ways to change the XC60 settings. Unfortunately, they're all in different places. Some menus are hidden on the left of the touchscreen, some pull down from the top, and others require the push of a button. For instance, the inscription I'm driving has five selectable drive modes, which you can select only from this button on the console. One of them is called Individual, and it lets you adjust the steering feel, acceleration, brake feel, and optional air suspension to your own preferences. That's an awesome feature. But in order to make all those choices, you have to pull down a separate hidden menu from the top of the touchscreen. By comparison, BMW's iDrive and Audi's MMI with virtual cockpit are simpler and they're a lot easier to navigate. The choice of where to put which menus doesn't make any sense either. The optional massaging seats have more than 30 settings, but they're nowhere to be found on the touchscreen's seats menu. Instead, you have to press a button on the seat itself. On the other hand, the interior lighting menu lets you choose from a veritable rainbow of colors, and all those choices are front and center on the dashboard. Now, I'm not complaining about getting a massage from my car, and I really like that Volvo lets you personalize so many things about the XC60 to really make it your own, but I just wish they had put all of the menus in one place. That way you can change them one time at the dealership when you buy the car, and then never think about them again. Otherwise, even performing a simple task, like finding where the radio controls are, can take your eyes off the road for a long time. For a company like Volvo that made its name selling safe cars, that's a big oversight. At least Volvo put plenty of effort into the other safety features. Every XC60 comes standard with Volvo's city safety package, and that'll stop the car or even steer it out of the way to avoid a collision with another car, a pedestrian, or a bicycle at low speeds. And at high speeds, it'll hit the brakes for you to help lessen the impact of a crash. New for 2018 is oncoming lane mitigation. If you drift out of your lane and go into the path of an oncoming vehicle, the XC60 will help steer you back on track to prevent a head-on collision. Blind spot detection and lane keep assist are optional, part of a $1,110 vision package. More than just a warning, the car will even steer you back into your lane if you're at risk of hitting a car or a motorcycle that's in your blind spot. And if any of these fail, the XC60 is as safe as a car can get, and an Insurance Institute for Highway Safety Top Safety Pick Plus. But all these systems are designed to be unobtrusive. Even when I had a couple near misses, like when a chair fell off a truck in the middle of the highway in front of me, the car never took over. And that's because it could detect my steering and brake inputs. It knew I had the situation under control, so it didn't intervene. Now, if you're someone who's skeptical of autonomous driving technology, doesn't that sound like a good compromise? But I did make extensive use of Pilot Assist 2 during my hundreds of highway miles. That's Volvo's autonomous cruise control system with steering assistance. Now it's been updated to work at speeds up to 80 miles an hour and it doesn't require a car in front of you. Now the XC60 is definitely not a self-driving car. It'll scold you if you take your hands off the wheel for too long, it has trouble finding faded lane lines, and it can't really handle it when a car cuts you off in traffic. Still, it works fine navigating through Boston's notorious rush hour, and on long highway slogs, it was nice to take a break every once in a while and just let the car take over. One time, just to see what it could do, I even tried it out while driving through the White Mountains of New Hampshire. No matter how sharp the curves were, it did all the steering and braking for me, as long as it could see the lane lines. But what if you've got a stretch of open road and you actually want to enjoy the drive? Well, how well the XC60 performs depends upon which trim you choose and where you're driving. On highways and empty back roads, the XC60 is settled and calm. If you want to pass a car or put a little oomph into a curve, the turbo works effortlessly in the background and the car's heft feels evenly distributed and firmly planted. Turn up the optional Bowers & Wilkins sound system, find an open highway, and it is really easy to fall in love with this car. I also took it on some gravel roads with patches of ice and snow. 
yeah, it lost grip sometimes, but the all-wheel drive system always put me back in control. Only in city traffic does the XC60 feel out of balance. Accelerate from 20 miles an hour to 35, and that eight-speed automatic that was so helpful on the highway just doesn't know what to do with itself. And then there's a major problem with the hybrid, and that's its brakes. They're regenerative, which means they recapture kinetic energy to recharge the battery. Now, most regenerative brakes feel a little grippy, but the XC60s are almost impossible to modulate. No matter how gently you try and slow the car, you end up stopping abruptly. Forget about kids in the back seat. It's enough to make even the driver car sick. I also wish Volvo had focused more on fuel economy than performance. Yeah, 400 horsepower is a fun number to brag about, especially because it's the same as a base Porsche Macan Turbo. But when I didn't plug in the XC60, I only got gas mileage in the low teens in city driving. The EPA rates it at 26 miles a gallon combined, but I could barely get above 22. For a hybrid, it just doesn't make any sense. Yes, the T8 does get a $5,000 tax credit for being a plug-in, but I'd still avoid it. For me, the XC60's sweet spot is a T6 Momentum with a convenience package. Now that gets you the supercharged engine and combined fuel economy around 23 miles a gallon, as well as the best added options like pilot assist and adjustable drive modes, plus keyless entry, power fold-down rear seats, and a hands-free tailgate that opens when you wave your foot underneath it. Altogether, that will set you back around $48,100. You're not going to find another car in the XC60's class with as much safety technology for that price. Most luxury crossover buyers will be happy with the Audi Q5 or the BMW X3, and I consider those the best cars in the class. But if those sound boring to you and you don't want the power of a Porsche or the modern looks of a Lexus, head to your local Volvo dealer. When Volvo gets a detail right, they really get it right. And despite a few major missteps, Volvo got a lot of details right on the XC60. If you want a car that can steer itself through curves, that has a driftwood interior, and that you can personalize to make it truly yours, you're not just gonna like the XC60, you're gonna love it. To read my full review of the 2018 Volvo XC60, head over to cargurus.com. I'd love to hear what you think of its self-driving features in the comments. And if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe.